Hi, Ben. How are you? Uh, you know, we're all rotten, but such is the world. It's hard times. For sure. I, uh, I wanted to share with you that um, we are very grateful that you are on our podcast today. We know you're very busy. We're watching you. We appreciate everything you share. And um, our mission on our podcast is growth oriented. We are Chabad Orthodox women. And um, our podcast is very much about finding ways to connect spiritually to, um, to Hashem, um, also to tap into our potential and be the best versions of ourselves and share that with the world to spread the light. So this might be a little bit of a different in interview to your Stuff usual, you right. but um, we want to, to uh, discuss with you courage and conviction and well, how we can all be proud Jews today. Right. Um, so thanks for thanks for being here. We're so grateful that you made the time. And so our, our theme for today is really the courage to be disliked. And I think as a Jew in the world today, it's an inevitable part of, uh, of being uh, an open and, and uh, observant Jew. And we wanted to talk to you about about how you do it, how how you build the courage to to be in a world uh, with a lot of anti-Semitism and to speak the way you do and to have the courage to do so in, in uh, you know, while surrounded by a lot of hate and, and I'm sure messages that are not very pleasant to uh, uh, to see. So can you tell us how, how do you do it? So I can sort of break down that question into two parts. One is, you know, where you find the ability to stand up in tough times. And, and the second part is how you have a, a robust enough feedback loop that you can correct yourself when, when you're doing the wrong thing, because those are really two sides of, of the same coin. So in terms of being able to stand up and, and say what I think are, are true things when, when times are, are really tough, I mean, to, to a certain extent, I think that people have personality traits and, and some of them are baked into the cake, but, but a lot of it is just recognizing the reality of who you are and the reality of what the world is. And that means being realistic about what the world is, that, that it's not all going to be sunshine and, and roses and that, that believing that everybody is going to respond to you standing up for things that you believe are true with unbridled applause is the view of a child. And, and that as you get older, the world is filled with people who are going to dislike what you say. And that's just the way that the world is, but it doesn't mean that what you're saying is untrue or wrong. In some cases, it means that what you're saying is, is deeply necessary. And the more flack you're taking, as they say, the more you're actually over the target. And when it, when it comes to you know just the truth of being a Jew in the world, that's not something that you can change. And this is something that Rav Soloveitchik talked a lot about, the, the idea of that, that there are two covenants, the covenant of fate and the covenant of destiny. And unfortunately, um, yeah, the, the Jewish people tend to be you know, locked into the covenant of fate more than they tend to embrace the covenant of destiny. He talked about the covenant of fate is the idea that, that we're all locked together in, in this cosmic deal, essentially, with God, this covenant that, that is unbreakable. And you can try to run away from it. You can try to run away from what you are or how the world is going to see you, but the world is going to put you right back in there no matter what you think or what you feel. And you're seeing that in Israel right now, where where Jews are Jews, whether they are completely Chiloni or whether they're completely Dati. It, it doesn't seem to, you can be Haredi or you can be a, a left-wing person who was murdered at Kibbutz Beri and you're seen by the world in exactly the same way because that's the covenant of faith. It's just the reality of the world. And you can accept that and, and embrace it. And if you do accept that and embrace it, then it becomes what Rav Soloveitchik called the covenant of destiny. At that point, you've embraced what it is that you're supposed to be on the planet, and you can turn what what could be a, a really tough and, and horrible situation into something that is positive, not just for you, but for the world at large. Because the reality is that the world respects people who stand up and speak on behalf of truth. They, they respect people who, who stand tall for what they believe in. I'm very frequently asked why I wear a kippah publicly, and the answer is it never really occurred to me not to wear a kippah publicly. I've always worn a kippah, and so the idea of taking it off to please people would have been weird. And what I found is that that actually tends to earn more respect than the opposite way around. And hiding what you are and who you are, people can see it anyway. And so hiding behind you know, some something to try and obscure that doesn't tend to benefit you and it doesn't tend to benefit your cause. And there's the, yeah. the second question, which is how you deal with, with the, the incoming. And, and there, the only answer is that you have to have uh, enough of a shell and enough of group of people who have your best interests at heart that you can tell the difference between friend and foe. And two is that you do have to leave yourself open to a feedback loop where if you get something wrong, you can correct it. And it's easy to err in either direction. It's easy to have so close an echo chamber that you can't hear anything from the outside. And so everything you say becomes inherently right and true and, and you make mistakes, but, but nobody around you is willing to tell you that. And it's also easy to get overtaken from the outside where every critique of you is true and so you tear yourself down. And so finding that balance is, is tough but I think doable and necessary.
Did you come to it on your own or were you raised in that way, in, in a home that, with those values? Uh, I was definitely raised that way. So my, my, my parents are, are, are you know very much in line with my values uh, or I'm in line with theirs to be more accurate. Uh, and um, my dad uh, w particularly was, was always uh, a big booster of the idea that I should speak truth where I saw it. Uh, you know, I was, I, I've had a skill set since I was very, very young. I mean, I was winning speech contests for high schoolers when I was in third grade. So he could tell very, you know, very young that I was a really good writer, that I was a really good speaker. And when people ask him now, like, are they surprised at what's happened in terms of my career and, and how many people I speak to? He, he always says no, <laughs> that he's not. Um, because the, the truth is I was doing this kind of stuff at a very, very early age. I mean, I found a paper from when I was maybe 10 or 11 years old talking about the Clinton impeachment from like 1998. Uh, so I guess I was 13 or 14. Uh, and so the the involvement in these sorts of issues uh, has, has always been part of, of what I do. Uh, and also just the, the idea of being proud to, to be Jewish because Judaism stands for values, not in terms of ethnic Judaism. I, I really care very little for ethnic Judaism, but, but in terms of being proud of Jewish values and the things that the Jews are supposed to stand for, again, that, that's, that's something that's inculcated from a, a very young age. And either you can embrace it or you can run away from it, but you're going to be held to account for it.